This is the sound of liquid helium ice cream. Yum. Welcome to the audio feed. Is it possible to raise $300 million with a bake sale? Also, we replicate an Ig Nobel Prize winning experiment. And later, Zach Tobin tells us about the significance of the number three. All this and more on our podcast. My name is Lawrence Young, and first... Put your seats and tray tables in their upright and locked position and get ready for news at the speed of academic publication. I'm Crystal Dilworth. And I'm Evans Boney. A new law in the United States allows Apollo-era astronauts to keep artifacts they found during their trips into space. An older law, which some might call the first law, allows the unclaimed portion of our space trash to continue at its current velocity unless acted on by an external force. An ancient statue of Buddha, discovered by the Nazis on a 1936 expedition to Tibet, has been determined by its chemical composition to have been carved from a meteorite. Dubbed the Buddha from space, it is one of Earth's most valuable sculptures. In a related story, George Lucas revealed the plot for the next Indiana Jones movie. A University of Chicago paleontologist recently discovered a small, fanged dinosaur with porcupine quills. Pegomastax africanus. He claims the tiny dinosaur would be a nice pet. What could possibly go wrong? (laughs) Look for this cuddly creature to star in the Beverly Hills Chihuahua prequel, Howard the Pegomastax, directed by George Lucas. F*** you, George Lucas. Research from the Radiation Dosimetry Journal indicates that long beards do in fact prevent sunburn. That is, except for Chuck Norris whose beard protects the sun from Chuck Byrne. hey A study of eunuchs in ancient Korea revealed they lived an average of 14 years longer than their uncastrated peers, identifying testosterone as a possible culprit for shorter lifetimes in men. When asked for comment, every non-castrated man said, it's not worth it. It really isn't. hey The Nobel Prize for Literature went to Mo Yan, who, quote, with hallucinatory realism, merges folk tales, history, and the contemporary. This came as a shock to many Americans who were expecting Stephanie Meyer to win for her quaternary examination of transmortal intimacy in the Pacific Northwest. The Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to Serge Haroche and David Wineland, who were able to observe quantum states without destroying them. One possible application is in super-precise clocks. Perhaps a quantum clock would be able to give you some plausible deniability if you showed up late. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. My clock was in a superposition of 8.30 and 8.59, and until I got here, I couldn't have been certain if I would be on time. Astronauts used MacGyver-like skill to remove a jammed bolt and repair a power system aboard the International Space Station. Using an Allen wrench, a wire brush, and a toothbrush. I hope they brought some toothpaste in case their heat shields need a cinnamon spot weld. Now with whitening. Due to budget cuts, astronauts aboard the station will have to share the remaining toothbrush for the rest of the mission. For more on NASA's actual budget woes, we turn to our correspondent, Matt Sigler, for a fundraising update. This spring's presidential budget called for a $300 million cut to planetary science research. This essentially prevents NASA from funding a new flagship mission, a big mission like the Curiosity rover to Mars or Voyager. So if you were a planetary scientist like me, how would you go about raising $300 million? Planetary bake sale, live music, free cupcakes, supporting NASA! Woo! That was June 9th, in a high school parking lot outside of NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, where planetary scientists like me begged for money. Or at least gave away cupcakes in exchange for signed letters to Congress. My mom used to make cupcakes like this when I was a kid. These are good. Oh, Red Planet Cupcakes, nice. (laughs) Oh, they even have ice at the pole! (laughs) Yes, they do! It was originally a car wash and bake sale, so dirty. but the high school decided that we couldn't use their water. I know. So, bake sale it was. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Support NASA. Come get some cupcakes. This was one of 15 events across the country intended to raise public awareness about the budget cuts. Amongst people in the planetary science community, I saw a broad range of reactions, from strong support to a fear that a political stunt with NASA scientists selling cupcakes would be a source of public embarrassment. But the reality of the budget cuts led many of us in the field to take it quite seriously. I'm Jean-Pierre Williams. I'm a research scientist at UCLA in the Earth and Space Sciences Department. I'm personally here because I care about planetary science. I think it's something that's important for our nation to do. And I'm concerned about the proposed cuts to planetary science that are almost 21%, which will have very serious consequences for our ability to continue exploring the solar system. And it wasn't just planetary scientists. What was meaningful to me 
was the support that we got from people like local baker Sean Kostikov, who helped found an advocacy group called the Society for Planetary Defense. She had her own reasons for being there. One of my greatest inspirations in life was Carl Sagan. And uh, almost every word out of his mouth was something profound to me. And I thought one day I, I want to be that. I want to be somebody who inspires a younger generation. If this is important to people, it's important for them to speak up now and tell their leaders that this is important. Otherwise, if the leaders don't know this is important to the voters, then they can turn their backs on this and this could all go away. By the end of the day, we had collected just under 2,500 signatures from the JPL bake sale, which makes only a small dent in the bigger picture. And in light of recent successes, such as Curiosity landing on Mars, Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. People might forget that these budget cuts still exist. But as it stands, we're not going to have a future rover mission to celebrate. And we're currently not going to have a mission to Jupiter's moon Europa, where we could find extraterrestrial life. Even Mars exploration, which was the least hit of anything by the budget cuts, saw only two of 20 Senate committee members show up to a hearing about its future. That hearing, on September 12th, was one month after Curiosity landed, and 50 years to the day after John F. Kennedy's famous speech. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. Thanks to Matt Sigler for that report. For more information about citizen efforts to fight the budget cuts to planetary science, check out the Society for Planetary Defense at planetarydefenders.org or go to the Planetary Bake Sales Facebook page. You're listening to the audio feed. Okay, so that was kind of intense. And I think we should end this segment actually on kind of a more energetic note. Will I Am, iconoclast and producer of the contemporary ballroom classic My Humps, made an extraterrestrial debut last month with his new single, Reach for the Stars. NASA, who co-sponsored the song, hopes it will inspire a new generation to become scientists and engineers. Will I Am also hopes the song will inspire kids to become scientists and engineers, who use autotune. So they actually played his new song from the rover Curiosity? Oh no, they didn't play the song over speakers on Mars. They sent it to the rover and then streamed it back to Earth so NASA engineers could dance awkwardly to it on camera. Oh, so what's next on Curiosity's playlist? Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Oh, 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 oh. Let me see your hands hey. hey, sexy lady. Hello and welcome to The Thesis Defense, PhD TV's quiz show where the facts are real, but the people are not. I'm your host, Zach Tobin. Let's meet this episode's panel. Panelist number one, would you care to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Austin Dallas. I'm a grad student at UT Akron. Let me just say it's a big honor to be here, Alex. I've been a huge fan of the show for years. Nice to meet you, Austin. Panelist number two? Good evening, Zachary. I'm Dr. Grant Illiquent, professor of neurobiology. Now, we've actually seen a lot of big advancements in neurobiology lately. And to be clear, I'm, I'm not talking about neuroscience. Thank you, Professor Illiquent. Now, I assume both of our panelists have been familiarized with the rules and regulations of the thesis defense? Not I'm even a little not. bit. Fantastic! Let's move right into the first round. Current events. Hands on your buzzers, gentlemen. Here's your first question. Physicists at Harvard have created an ultra-thin, flat what? That can focus light without the distortion seen in more conventional versions. Bzz. Austin, your answer? What is a lens? Ding! That is correct, but you don't have to give your answers in the form of a question. Now, these new lenses are fully scalable and easy to manufacture, meaning you could focus the sun's rays onto insects of all sizes. Alright, I'll take potpourri for 200. 
Wrong game show, Austin, but nice try. Next question. The newest Mars rover named Zzz. Yes, Austin? Curiosity. Eh. I'm sorry, Austin. Shoot. You'll have to listen to the rest of the question. The newest Mars rover, named Curiosity, was developed by what NASA affiliate? Professor? That would be the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL. Ding! Correct! Thanks to the incredibly complicated sky crane process used to deploy Curiosity, we would have also accepted just plain lucky as the expansion of the initials JPL. <laughs> just plain lucky. Now why would we want yet another rover on Mars? Well, Curiosity is a lot bigger and badder than any of its cousins out there. It's nuclear powered. It's got a massive array of instruments on it, most notably amongst them being its vaporizing laser. Pew, pew. So if it does discover Martians, pew. you can bet Curiosity will kick them right off the planet. That is highly unlikely. Well, yeah, Professor, because it was a joke. Because its reaction time is too slow. It takes tens of minutes to relay a signal to Curiosity and back. So if there are Martians, they'll already have access to our nuclear technology before we even know there are Martians to begin with. <laughs> well, that's that not exactly- That makes perfect sense. Bonus point, Austin. Next question. This month, the nation mourns the passing of legendary astronaut and first person on the moon- Zzz. Yes, Austin? Neil Armstrong. Eh. Austin, you really should have learned your lesson by now. Listen to the rest of the question. This month, the nation mourns the passing of legendary astronaut and first person on the moon, Neil Armstrong. What is 15 divided by 5? Professor, do you want to steal this one? Well, that is a trivial exercise. I shall leave it to the listener. The minutia of arithmetic bores me, personally. Eh. Well, the answer was 3. 3. As in the number of days it took Apollo 11 to get to the moon. 3. As in the number in the crew, comprised of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. 3. Alright, next question. The cause of a global throat cancer epidemic was found to be what? Buzz. Austin? Uh, cigarettes? Eh. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Dang it. But at least you listened to the whole question this time. Professor, do you have an answer? Would it be the pollution in urban environments? Eh. I'm afraid that's also incorrect. What? The answer was a mystery. The cause of the global throat cancer epidemic is a mystery. I would have also accepted an active topic of research. One hypothesis from 2011 indicates it may be related to the spread of human papillomavirus, or HPV. Moving on, Professor Noam Sobel of the Weizmann Institute has shown with proper conditioning it is actually possible to learn while you do what? Buzz. Yes, Professor Eloquent. Ding! What? That is correct. Under the right conditions, you can in fact learn while you sleep. Hmm. As of right now, those conditions involve the introduction of odors of varying pleasantness and pairing them with tones to remember. Complementing this with lucid dreaming, you can dream about studying while you actually study in real time, thus having the most boring dreams one could ever dream of having. Final buzz. Well, that cacophony of noise means it's the end of round one, and therefore the end of the entire game. And with slightly more points than his opponent, it looks like Professor Grant Eloquent has defeated Austin Dallas in today's challenge. Well, this has been a colossal waste of time. I have to get back to the lab, which is where the two of you should be. Inspiring words, Professor. Before we sign out, it's time for your homework assignment. Today's problem comes to us from deep within the annals of my own psyche. If the planet Neptune were to suddenly stop in its trajectory around the solar system, how long, in days, would it take to fall into the center of the sun? If you think you know the answer, or if you have a suggestion for another homework problem for us, please email us at homework at phdcomics.com. And remember, a mathematician never reveals his secrets. You've been listening to the audio feed. Well, that's our show for today, and I hope you liked it. Here to send us off with a demonstration of the Ig Nobel Prize-winning device, the Speech Jammer, is our man on the ground, Zach Tobin. The Speech Jammer is a device that stops people from talking by playing back their words to them at a very slight delay, and hearing their voice after they talk screws up their cadence because they're trying to line up with the reflected speech instead of the actual speech that they hear in their head. <laughs>
Put the hair in their head. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was produced by Lawrence Young. Oh, sorry, Young. <laughs> Written by Evans Boney, Matt Sigler, Jacques Tobin, and Lauren Young. Special thanks to Jorge Cham, I love him. Crystal Dilworth, Meg Rosenberg, and Lucinda Sheep. The opening theme was composed by Michael Gallant. And performed by Michael Gallant and Lawrence Young. For more information about Michael, go to gallantmusic.com. This podcast is distributed by PhD TV for Piled Higher and Deeper Publishing. Piled Higher and Deeper Publishing is a limited liability company.